Let's start by putting the spacers onto the caster. So this is the caster and as you can see I've already put three of the spacers on so we just need to put the last one on. These just hold the uh, the wheel uh, a little bit further away from the plastic chassis so that it's uh, in the right place, right height for the, uh, for the main wheels that are attached to the gear motors. So you can just do that up and you can, if you get a good grip of that, you can just do it by hand, but you may also find it easier with a pair of pliers. Okay, so the next step is that we need to fit this onto the chassis. And it goes to the to this end of the chassis, and you have to just look around and find the spacing of holes that will fit the chassis. Uh, so it's going to sit right at the end there. And then we just need four of these screws I think they're eight millimeter long screws. There's only two sizes of screw in, this, in the kit. There's these screws and some really long screws, uh, bolts I should say, that are, are used to attach the wheels. So let's find the right holes for this. Okay. So let's just put it in my hand. Tighten it up. Usually worth just putting things in fairly loosely to start with. So you got it in the right place and then tighten it up a bit more. Be careful not to tighten any of the screws up really tight or you might just find that you crack the plastic. Third screw. And the last screw. And we'll just go around them all and just give them a little, just make sure they're reasonably tight. So now that we've attached the caster, the next step is to attach the battery box. And we're going to put the battery box on the bottom of the board, so let's flip it over. And um, this is going to be attached with one hole uh, using one bolt and one nut. Um, if you want to make it a bit more secure, um, you might find that it's uh, that you want to actually just glue the glue this onto the battery box onto the bottom of the base, um, or you could drill yourself a hole underneath there and then put it, use another screw to attach it. The um, battery box fits in this hole, so if you look back from the caster, it sort of forms a triangle with the, these two pins of it um, and that, that's going to go over like that uh, so and then we want it to be fairly straight and the motors are going to sit either side of it remember this is the underside of the board so let's just screw that into place you want to put the head of the um, bolt through from the battery box side uh, this is if you've got uh, a magnetic screwdriver this can be easier there we go, so that's going to go like that and we'll put the nut on the end there. Remember to make sure that the wires are coming out of this end of the battery box. There we go, Let's screw that up tight. Okay, good, so then we can actually thread these wires through one of these convenient holes. Doesn't really matter which, but that's probably a good one. And they're going to eventually reach through to the front side of the box and attach to the uh, of the chassis, sorry, and attach to the uh, Raspberry Robot board on the front here of the with the Raspberry Pi. The next step is to assemble the wheels. Here's the gear motor, which has already got uh, leads attached to it, and we just need to push the, um, the wheel on, that's going to go on like that, we'll do that in a bit. And then we also have to attach this uh, bracket that's used to uh, keep everything in place. So you'll notice on the gear motor there's two big holes there that coincide with the bracket. Um, that's going to go like that. And we're actually going to use these long nuts and we're going to push the long nut through from the, um, the far side from the bracket through the top hole, it goes all the way through and the same on the bottom one. Make sure that you've got the holes of the brackets upwards like this and you've got the 
wires for the gear motor down at this end. Put the two nuts on. Tighten them up by hand first. Do them as tight as you can with your fingers and then uh, just tighten up the screwdriver. Again, if you've got a pair of pliers, it'll help just to hold the nuts still while you tighten up the bolts. Okay, so that goes like that. The um, wheel, you'll notice it's got a light, a sort of, um, it's in a kind of oval shape and that coincides with the flat sides on the, um, on the drive shaft of the gear motor. So try and line them up before you push them on. It's quite a tight fit, but you get the gear, the wheel on like that. Okay, there we go. So once you've assembled one of the wheels like that, uh, you need to assemble the one for the other side. And that needs to be a mirror image of this. So here's the other one next to it, so you can see for comparison. Uh, we've got, the, got the, the leads all going to the center. Okay, so the next step will be attaching these to the chassis. And to do that, we just need to find the right place on the on the chassis, as always. Um, and in this case, you'll see that the wheel's going to go like that. You see this little cross-shaped cut in the chassis? That's actually for the some rotary encoder discs that are included with the kit, but there's no sensors included in the kit to, to actually make use of that. So uh, at the moment, just ignore that, but it's quite good for lining it up. So the drive shaft of the gear motor should be in the center of there, and it's these two screw holes here. Kind of a bit fiddly to get them in. Be easiest to do this actually get the uh, get the bolt in the end of the screwdriver and then tighten it up again remember not to tighten it too tight or you might end up cracking the plastic let's just get that lined up that's one motor in place, tighten that up, tighten that up, and then the other one on the other side, and that just uh, again fits these two holes here, and the bolt fits in there. Put that one in there. And the other one in here. And then the last thing we need to do really is actually push these motor wires through some convenient hole. Um, and it's worth keeping them so that the left motor wires go out towards a, a hole towards the left and the right ones go out to a hole towards the right. So let's push those out of there like that. Just pull them through a bit, a bit tight and you can pull them around that um, shaft just to keep them in place a bit. Okay, so that's all attached on the bottom. Straighten it up a bit and probably need to tighten those up a bit from the top. And there we go. It's starting to look a bit like a robot. The next step is to attach the Raspberry Pi to the chassis. So let's move that out of the way for a moment. This is done using um, some self-adhesive pads and you have to be a little bit careful where you put these. You don't want to put them where there's any tiny little components. They shouldn't come off, but don't want to take the risk. So I put one in this corner next to the SD card and one in this corner, which is immediately underneath the USB sockets. Um, and then you can peel off the backing. Now, we need to find the right place to put this on the, on the chassis. And obviously it's going to go up this end, 
well not that obviously really but it's going to go this way around so we have the USB sockets towards the caster and there's nothing metal on here except these bolts here and this bolt here so we need to make sure they're well away from the underside of the of the robot board so let's put them like that and I generally line it up with the bottom of the battery box is probably a good location for this so that's just a little bit past this nut here so just uh, put that and press it firmly on you'll probably find at some point that you want to use your Raspberry Pi for something else and, and don't worry these sticky pads aren't that permanent with a little bit of jiggling you'll be able to pull the board off fairly easily from there the next step is to fit the Raspberry Robot board onto the chassis this goes right up this end of the GPIO connector. The board's actually designed to work with um, older Raspberry Pis that only have 26 pins and the newer 40 pin Raspberry Pis. Be careful that you get both rows of sockets when you push it on because it's quite easy to just end up putting it over one row rather than both rows. So that just fits on there up at the end of the board. Then we've got um, some wires to connect up. So these are the wires from this motor and you'll need a slightly smaller, finer screwdriver to actually get to these terminals. And you can see that um, the terminals blocks we're going to connect to are labelled L for left, R for right, and then this, this pair on the end here are for supplying the power from the battery box. Uh, so let's start by putting the... Um, I tend to, just to be consistent, put the, uh, the black one in on the looking at it from this side the right hand side or the top the, um, the screw terminals these ones you have to undo them a bit to start with before you can put any wires in so let's just go along the row undoing all of them strangely when you look at the what's happening on the terminals here you can't really tell what's happening um, but they do kind of pull a plate upwards to grip the wire, which is great because it means they'll pull, they'll, they can grip quite thick wires like the ones connected to the motors or thinner wires like these that are connect coming from the battery box. Let's put the, uh, the black and negative motor lead for the left hand side in there, the uh, positive for the left hand motor in there. And then do the same for the right motor for the next pair of connections. And finally the power connectors. Uh, it's ground on this side. And then the end connector is the plus volts. So pop that in there. Do that one up. And then straighten up your board. Okay, and the final step is to attach the ultrasonic rangefinder. So this just sits in this socket here, facing forwards like that, and that's what's gonna we're gonna be able to use that to measure distances. You'll also notice that I've got the a USB Wi-Fi adapter in there, uh, and that's just so that we can connect to the Raspberry Pi wirelessly without having to attach all the usual bits and pieces like keyboard and mouse and monitor. So all that remains to be done is to put some batteries into the battery pack. So let's flip the thing over. Probably worth taking this off so it doesn't get bent. Okay. And um, just make sure you get the polarity right when you're pushing these in. And because um, there's no on-off switch, uh, the switch actually is bundled with the kit. And if for those of you who are into soldering and um, know how to do these things, you might find that you want to add a switch but what I tend to do is just when I'm not using it I take one of the batteries out you don't have to take all of the batteries out just taking one of the batteries out will be sufficient to break the circuit okay so you can just see that the Raspberry Pi is starting to boot up there and um, we'll leave that for a while and we'll find that um, it'll boot up um, because we have a Wi-Fi dongle attached to it we'll be able to connect to it over SSA. You will find that this um, eats batteries fairly quickly. The batteries should last a few hours but it's surprising how quickly uh, that can disappear. You can, there's no problem at all, uh, plugging your USB power as long as you can get to the socket alright. 
out to the Raspberry Pi as well as powering it from batteries. This is true of the robot board version 3. It wasn't true of earlier versions of the robot board, but on this that's absolutely fine. Um, in fact, you can just plug it into USB power, but you'll find that some of the functions of the robot board won't be available. So you'll still be able to use the rangefinder and the LEDs and the switch contacts and the I2C interface, uh, but you won't be able to use the motor driver or the open collector outputs. But just while you're testing and setting things up and writing programs, it'll save an awful lot of batteries if you just plug it into a USB lead.